Today we speak about uh, Git. Git is a version control system, so I will introduce you a uh, version control system. Let's start uh, from the end. One moment. A little bit end. Let's start with an homework. No, let's start presenting an homework. Uh, since we end at seven, I present this homework before. So homeworks. First, create your own personal GitHub account. It's written here. So, second, try Git. Today we speak about Git, but we don't try effectively Git. So this is a website, try.github.io, that in 15 minutes present a tutorial for basic principle and basic uh, approaches to Git. So do this. The first, it's really mandatory because at a certain point we will ask you for your username in GitHub for the final project. The other is to, uh, to do a hands-on Git. So restart. Let's start with a question. How do you share and save data? I envision three cases. The first case, I'm working solo, and I have one computer this year. So to, to maintain data, to have a project uh, to be seen in time, I need backup. I don't, I don't want to lose my work tomorrow. I need to save different version early and frequently. The idea. What can I use? Well, external hard drive, dedicated folder on this computer or another computer, Dropbox, Google Drive, whatever. Quite easy, we can say. Every one of us did this at least one time. So, a problem. What if I forget to save a specific version and then I need it? If I start working on a project today and after one year from today, I need the version I develop tomorrow and I didn't save that version, what happens? I don't have. I lose the version. And what happens if I delete or lose a, per, a previous version? It's a, it may be it's a problem. It could be a problem. But working solo, it's quite easy to overcome this problem. Let's complicate a little bit. I'm still working solo, but I have more than one computer. So I need for each computer backup, different saved version, early and frequent saving, and convention on file names, probably. So if I make a project, and here I call it uh, my project uh, one, uh, first save, second save, my project one, second save. And on the other computer, I call it project, uh, first project, uh, the first version, or the second version, first project 2014, uh, March. In a year, how do you understand what is the, the proper, the right version of the program I need? I have two different files with two different names, with different convention. So probably I need a little bit convention on file name. This project is named my project one and has appended a date, 2014, March 17. To do this, again, I can use external hard drive, USB, memory sticks, Dropbox again, shared folder between two computers, etc. The drawbacks. What if I forget to save a specific version again? I lose it. As before, if I delete or I lose a previous version, I don't have. I'm not able to recover that version. 
I speak of a version one year old, for example, three months old. If you next year want to look at the first stage of your final project, you cannot probably with a traditional uh, saving system. What happens if I forgot to, to copy one version from one computer to another and then one computer stopped working? I lose the, that version. It's only a, a, a activity that a human being can do, this. This is not automated activity. You have to drag and drop files from one destination, from one target to one destination, from one place to another. A little bit complex. I work in team. Here we are three person with Two of them are two computers, but we can imagine also a team of 10 people, 20 people. So for each of them, for each computer, I need to have a, a very good history, a very good versioning of all my projects. I need backup, I need a different saved version, I need a frequently saving, I, I need a conventional name shared between me, my computer, and all the team, so that I send uh, one project to another team member, uh, it, can, it can easily collocate that project in time and in the order of operation. So what can I use? Again, memory stick, USB, external drive, Dropbox, Google Drive, emails, etc. Problems are the same for a certain part, but from another part, they are worst. Because what if a team member forgets to save a specific version and then someone need it? What if someone deletes or loses a version or someone forget to, sp to share a specific version of the project? Worst. Who has the latest version? I need to call all the team member to understand who has the last version of, the, of my project. Who has the right to edit that project? Everyone can do whatever edit it wants. How to ensure that everyone see the latest up-to-date version of everything, not only a file. Imagine a project bigger, hundreds, tons of files. Everyone, every programmer, every developer, should have the latest version to work on it. And finally, how to handle conflicts. If I edit a file on line three, and another team member, whenever in the, in the world, edit the same file in the same line, who is the, the, right, who is the owner of the right version? Me or the other developer? All this issue, brings to what is called the version control system. A version control system, born a lot of time ago, with these aims, to record changes to a file or a set of files over time so that everyone can recall a specific version later. In a year, I can, with a version control system, I can recall the version of the project I started today. Uh, a little bit of history. Three generation, local version system, a lot of time ago, almost nobody used it. Centralized version system, like CVS Subversion and Team Foundation Server, it is Microsoft. And final generation distributed version control system, like Git or Mercurial. Now we are here between the centralized version control uh, generation and the distributed, in the sense that most of developers and people using version control system use a distributed version control system, but some of them still use a centralized. Basic concept, a repository. This is a symbol I use in all the slides for repository. A repository is a place 
where you store all your work. A repository contains every version of the work that has every that ever existed from now up to the end of the world, possibly. It contains files, layouts of directories, history, all files that has been deleted, added, modified, rewritten, everything, all the history. And a repository has the characteristic to, that can be shared by the whole team. It's not a private thing. It's quite a public. Whole team member can access the repository. Then we have the working copy. The working copy is a, a you can say, private snapshot of the repository that is used by each developer for working, for do effective work, for program, for programming, for example. Is the place where all the changes happens. It's private, so it's not shared by all the team. It works on my computer. It's here. It's physically on my computer. And it has uh, some metadata for keep track of the state of the thing, like uh, a file has been modified, or is this file new, or exists also before? Has a file been deleted? When? How we can pass thing between a working copy and a repository with the commit method. The commit is an operation that modify the repository starting from your working copy. Commit, well, is atomically performed. So no commit can, uh, or the commit is complete or is not committed or the repository owns all the working copy, all the result of the commit, or the repository doesn't hold anything about that specific commit. With the commit operation, is typically provide a log message, a comments that explain what you are doing. What's the commit about? It's a message that becomes the history of the word repository. So if I start a project and commit for the first time uh, initial implementation. This is a message, initial implementation, that uh, entered in the history and stay here up to the repository has been destroyed, if happens. The opposite operation is update. Since the repository is shared, is public, we can say, the operation to get data from the repository is called update. That the update operation uh, will update your working copy, bring back the changes other developer uh, perform. This is a schema of a centralized version system. We have uh, three computer, five computer a number of computers. Each of them has a working copy and only a working copy. And then there is a server here, everywhere in the world, that has the one, only one repository. So a working copy, these three working copy, are strictly linked with this repository. This is a distributed version control system. Each computer has a working copy, as before, and also a repository inside of the computer. What's the difference between here and here? The difference is that in this case, we can have more of this central repository, more of this server. Here, you have one working copy that is linked with one repository. Here, a working copy is linked with the local repository, more than one also, and a big number from one up to infinite, from zero to infinite, of a central repository. You can also work here, only your computer with a distributed version control system.
Moving from this to this, we have to introduce two more basic concepts. The push and pull concept. Push is a way to synchronize data between your local repository and the remote repository, where the starting point is your local repository and the target is the remote repository. The opposite is pull, that from a remote repository brings back all the data to your repository. So the full chain is working copy committed to your local repository, push to the remote repository, if any. The way back is pull from a remote repository to your local repository, and maybe update the local, repos the local repository into the working copy. I said maybe because, uh, for example, in Git, the pull operation perform both the operation. The synchronization between repository and the update of the working copy. So, Git. Git is a distributed version control system, okay? Born in uh, 2005 for hosting the Linux kernel. So, not a project with three or two files and three or four members, but a project with tons of files and a lot of members sparse all over the world. Git was born to be used via command line. Now we have some graphical application, more or less complete. Its website is this, git-scm.com. It's free and open source, it's fully distributed, it's secure, it's whatever. Who uses Git? We use Git. And uh, some else, uh, like uh, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Genome, Postgre, Android, well, well Google, Android, uh, Linux, the kernel, Eclipse, host this file on, Linux, on uh, Git, uh, Perl, so a little bit, um, some people, we can say. How to get started with Git? Start an installation from that link, downloads, it's available from, for Linux, Mac OS X, and Mac OS X, and Windows. It has some graphical application, here uh, a list with different operating system. For this course, Git is already installed in the display computer and integrated in Eclipse via the eGit plugin that should be already installed in every new version of Eclipse. Please note the should be. Installing Git on Windows, you have to go to that link and download the, the Git from there. On Linux, you can check if it's already installed, maybe. Otherwise, you can install it from your package manager, uh, apt-get or yast or whatever, or again via the official uh, Git website. On Mac OS X, it's similar. Check if it's already installed. Otherwise, install from the website. For what people use Git, or version control in general? Well, programmers and developers use Git for hosting code. But Git works also well for text file, for uh, other type of documents. Git does not work well for big, for large files, for single large files. So big projects are okay, big files not. So if you can share also a website, we can say some documents, some PDF on Git, there are. You can share HTML, JavaScript code, Python, Ruby, Java, whatever, code, it's perfect. Not big file, a video of 30 gigabytes is not suitable for Git. It works, but with some troubles. So, let's see Git by example. We have this structure. We have Dave that works in England on its own computer. Marco that works in Italy on its own computer. And then we have a central server somewhere in the USA. 
For us, the central server will be GitHub. That probably is somewhere in the USA. So we have these two people, Marco and Dave, that works from the same company, but well, in two different countries. And they have to realize together a new software project. And they decide to make it in Python, for example, and to use Git for version control. So Marco starts to create, start with the project, start to create on the central server a Git repository. So he goes into the project directory and types this git init minus minus bear name the project. In this case, their project will be named my project dot git. This initialize an empty repository on the server for the project. This is the hard, we can say the hard way. For example, on GitHub, this is much more easier. Oh, no, 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 I cannot. On uh, GitHub, on, on uh, some graphical web-based uh, hosting, you can, uh, for example, you have typically a plus that create a new project. You give the name of the project, and uh, you select, well, the visibility, private, uh, public, etc., and that click create project. OK, this is more or less what happens also on GitHub. This is our internal uh, Git server, private. So you never see this. So now it's time for Dave to start working. So Dave pick up his computer and create a folder, wherever he wants, named, for example, my project, as Dave did on the central server go into the folder and type git init. Git init initialize an empty repository inside the folder. So it's important to have a folder before. Initialize what means? Means that creates a hidden folder named dot git inside the existing folder. This command here is typically typed without any parameter. Only on the server, it's used with the minus minus buyer parameter. On your PC, it's good also get in it. Then, well, Dave start writing some code for the project. Before committing, Dave's need to tell the version control system that that file has to be included in the version control system as well. Maybe Dave has some files that doesn't want to share. For example, the binary file of the project, some trial he did private. In the, in the work in, in its computer in that folder, but without sharing them with uh, the full team. So to add a file to the version control system, he opens the terminal and type again in the folder, git add the file it, it creates and work on it. So git add, for example, main.pi. This operation put the file in the so-called staging area that is typical of git. So the staging area, a quick parenthesis, is a sort of loading dock and contains things that are neither in the workspace and not in the repository. The staging area is called index also. So imagine to modify an existing file. They've added this main.pi. Before committing, 
no, it commits the file, so we see how, and then it starts modifying the file because it found a bug. So he modified the file, and Git marks this file as modified. It's not the file stored in the repository. It's modified. With the add operation, again, Git mark the file as staged. So it make it adds a snapshot of that file in the staging area. The staging area is also called the index because it contains an index of all the file that needs to be committed, that needs to be put in the repository. So finally, with the commit, uh, the file has been put on the repository. So the file has been taken from the staging area and stored permanently in the snapshot in the local repository. What if Dave wants to exclude permanently some file from all this operation? Well, there is a file in Git named .gitignore, that is a file, text file, and inside this file you can write all the name of the file or the extension of the file or the directory that you wouldn't uh, put in your repository. So if Dave has a trial.txt file, he can open this .gitignore and put inside trial.txt, and this file will be always ignored from the version control system, as if, as if this file doesn't exist. So, Dave adds this file to the staging area in the index, is marked as to be committed, and then finally it can commit the file. With the git commit minus m, for example, initial commit. The commit store the current snapshot of the working copy in the local repository. Minus m is a, a parameter for indicating a log message. For example, initial commit. So perform a commit and attach to this commit a message that explain what you do. This is the initial commit, the first working progress on that file. Another useful parameter, useless, at this point, is min minus a, that performs also an add for a already existing file. So you have a new file, you have to add to the index and then commit. You have a modified file, a file that is already on the version control. You can add again and then commit or you can commit with the parameter minus a that also performs an add. So, at this point, Dave is ready to load everything to the central repository. But we can have multiple remote repository, so it has to add, to specify what is the, the remote repository where you want to load data. So he performed this operation with this command, git, all the, the command in git start with git. Remote, because uh, our operation that re regards remote repository. Add, because we want to add a new remote. Then we need the name of the remote and its uh, URL. A standard name for the first remote repository is origin. And then, for example, an URL, http, centralserver.com, my project, uh, .git. That is the URL of this, of this repository. The repository created with git init minus minus bear my project.kit reside at that address HTTP. The address can be HTTP, HTTPS, Git, or without 
extension um, header. Remotes can be added, listed, uh, renamed, removed. A project, as I said before, can have multiple remotes, identified by a unique name. So Dave, add the file, commit the file, add the remote, that is one shot operation, only one time, you have to add the remote, and then can push everything from the local repository up to the center of the remote repository. How it performs this operation? Git push for the first time, it needs to, it's better to use minus U, then the name of the remote origin, we already set, and master. Master is, trust me, is the default branch name in a repository. We will see what is a branch, okay? For now, you can imagine that a repository on your computer as born with one branch, imagine a tree with one branch, named the master. So git push minus u origin master, take all your stuff on the master branch and put it on the origin remote in the same branch. On the origin will be created a master branch that is paired with yours. Minus u is useful for the first time to set the other information useful for other commands in Git. For example, pull. Otherwise, you have to open some configuration file and manually add them. So this minus u is quite useful. After the first time, you can use only, if you want to push on origin, the branch master, you can only, you can only use git push. From the other side, Marco. Marco is not working on the project. It only creates the repository in the remote. So Marco starts working on the project. The first operation he do is not create a new repository on your computer, on his computer. Since the repository already exists on the remote, it contains code, and such code is useful. He want to start working upon that code. He performed the clone operation. The clone operation take all, all the repository in the remote and clone it in the local repository and also perform an update of the working copy. So that Marco can now, with this operation, git clone URL of the, the git repository on the remote server. Marco has now all the code. What this, what this um, command do? Well, it creates a directory named my project from here my project.git, it creates a directory that is named equal. Then, as git init, initialize a git directory inside it to mark that this is a git repository and is not something else. Then, as I said, pull down the data and check out a, co a working copy with the latest version of that repository. The repository can have also multiple versions, a, a long history, but it checks out only the last, the newer things. If you want to clone the repository into a directory with a different name from my project because uh, you like it, you can append to this command the name of the directory to be created. In this case, everything continues to work. Your local repository and working copy are linked with the remote repository, but you have a different fold, unfolded with a different name. So, now Marco wants to see what Dave did. How? With another command that is named git log. He type git log, and the result is something similar to this. Much more longer if the, the repository has a longer history. 
In this case, we have only one commit, so we see only one item. That is commit a wonderful uh, hash for that integrity that change every time, the author of the commit and uh, its uh, email address, the date of the commit, and the message, initial commit. So now Marco edits the code because it starts working. And uh, decide to commit and push that their work, its work. So git commit minus a minus m added a new functionality. This is these are bad this is a bad uh, git uh, comment. Added new functionality. What functionality? A little bit more specific, it's better. It's an example. After committing, he performed the push operation. Meanwhile, we put we are here now. Marco has already has committed everything, has pushed everything, we know. But Dave now act here before the commit and the push. Okay? So meanwhile, before Marco committing and pushing, found some bugs in his code. And uh, first of all, a good practice is to take all the uh, possibly update from the remote server, from the remote repository. So it performs a git pull. A git pull take all the, the, that is the pull operation we said before, take all the uh, changes from the remote server and put it in the local uh, repository. In Git, what we called before pull is called, in reality, fetch. Fetch copy the change set from the remote repository into the local repository. The pull in Git is a fetch plus an update to the working copy. So the fetch tells you if there are some modifications. The pool tell you if there are some modification and if any, it get all the modification. So they've uh, performed the pool. No new, new, no new data is available because Marco doesn't have uh, still pushed his modification. At this time, he did now, for example. So they start fixing the bug. Marco, from the other side, push his modification. So Dave completes the work and commit the, the work as before with git commit minus a minus m bug fixing. Again, a log message to general, a little bit more specific to bug fixing what. He commits and try to push everything to the remote repository. What happens? happens that git push, instead of say, OK, it say to remote server, rejected. Master not fast forward, failed to push some ref to my project. What happens? Git is not allowing Dave to push its modify, its edit, because Marco has already pushed to the master branch. So the version that Dave has is not the same that is present on the central server. <coughs> Git doesn't permit to overwrite the work of other people. If a newer version is available on the remote server, you have to download that version and then apply your changes on that version. You cannot push a previous version, typically. So the solution, what is? Dave has to do a pull again, so he can fetch and then update its working uh, copy to bring change. And two things can happen. One thing happens, that is a merging 
you have to merge data on the remote server and data on your local repository together to form one new copy. And two possibility, merge, go smoothly, so everything is easy automatically. They've modified line two on the file main.pi and uh, Marco modified the, I don't know, line 100 on the same file or another file. So it can merge without any problem automatically. And then Dave can load, can push, can commit and push the result of this merging on the central server and it stops his, uh, his work. But typically, merging on file generates conflicts that are to be handled by hand. So when you merge automatically, you say, okay, merging, it's perfect, it's okay. When the merge happens with conflicts, you see a message like this from remote repository, commit uh, hash code, master to origin master, master is your local branch, origin master is the master branch on the origin server, on the remote repository, auto merging main.pi, conflict, merge conflict, uh, automatic merge failed, fix conflict, uh, and then commit the result. So, how Git highlights a conflict in this way? In the portion of the file, or in more than one portion of the file, where there is a conflict, it types head, Marco codes here, because Marco is the one who put the code on the remote server, a list of equal, and then Dave code here. So if Marco edits line two, and Dave also, you see up here the line two of the, of the Marco code, and here the line two of the, the Dave code. And then Dave can decide what to do. Delete his work, delete what Marco does, merge, merge una, mm, sum the modification from one side from the other, create a new line, whatever. And then there is the hash code of the, of the commit, representing the conflict. So, Dave at this point handled this, uh, this conflict, uh, fixed the, the file, for example, delete all the Marco code because uh, this modification is already present in his code and his code is more updated because uh, he also performs some bug fixing then he commit and can also push to the remote server that in this, this time say, okay, everything goes well. I accepted the push. And things go on in this way. From the other side, Marco pull data, change something, commit, push, again and again and again. Other useful command besides this basic. Remove a file from git. Git remove file name. Move or rename a, f um, a file git move from to or rename here the original file name, here the destination file name. Unstage some stage file, remove from the staging area, reset. Reset is also useful for restore a version from the remote repository. On modify a modified file, check out, minus minus name of the file. These are here as a reference. Change the last commit. You commit a file, you commit something with a comment uh, add bug, uh, bug fixing for something, I don't know. And then you perform a commit, not a push, only a commit, and say, oh, well, here there is another bug. I can fix them. And then I have two options. Then I can do another commit with another message like uh, another bug fixing. On, on, or I can amend the previous commit. 
So I add my modification to the previous commit. So the result is one commit only instead of two. Operational remotes. Git remote show all the remotes you already you have configured for your um, computer. Git remote add add a remote show inspect give you the details of that remote all the properties of that remote rename to rename a remote from for example from origin to something else git remote remove to remove a remote quickly okay up to now this is what we need for working in this course basic operation then git as oh something i forgot when you commit and push a file okay first time i create a file main.pi that is 30 kilobytes on disk i commit and push so the, all the file is copied on the remote server when i edit the file I delete one line, for example. Git does not copy another version, full version of that file. Git copy only the differences between those files. So Git has the original file, and then it has some instruction, we can say, that reports that line three has been modified in this way. So the amount of data, the amount of space is increased a little, okay? This is useful for bigger project. So another important thing in uh, Git is our tags and branches. I said that uh, uh, master is the main branch of a repository. So you see here, a representation. This is a, a Git repository with some history. This is the master branch, a line. These are other branches, hotfixes, releases, develop, feature, other branches, parallel to the master, in some cases linked with the master. And these circle are named tag. Branches and tags can exist locally, remotely, or both. You can have branches on your computer that are not present on the remote server, and vice versa. You can have tags on your computer that are not present on the remote server, and vice versa. Tags. Tags are useful to mark release point. OK, I develop uh, an amazing program, and this is version 1 to mark a release point. Then this is version 1.1, stable point of my program. Two types are available in Git, lightweight and annotated, they're more complete. Typically, it's a lightweight, it's a, a circle, a point on the branch with a, a, a label, in this case, for example, tag 0.1, in this case, tag 0.2. Some commands, git tag, show the tags, git tag name, create a tag, uh, tag show, show all the properties of the tag, and so on. Branches. Branches are used to develop isolated feature from the master. I mean, a git repository as a master branch. The ideal way to work in git is you want to add some functionality to your program, you branch it. You create a branch with the name or your uh, functionality. We can say that we are developing a program in Python for speaking with the Raspberry Pi. So we create a repository, we start writing some code, then it works, it speaks with the Raspberry uh, through the, for example, GPIO. And then we decide that uh, it uh, wants to, I don't know, speak with uh, a lamp that we place here 
without passing through the Raspberry Pi. The ideal way of working in Git is create a branch named lamp functionality, perform all the work in that branch, and when it, everything works, merge that branch with the master branch and remove the lamp functionality branch. Okay. So here it's written that you should use other branches for development and merge them back to the master upon completion. Branch are lightweight, are really light in uh, Git as disk space and uh, as uh, complexity. And they are a lot of command, uh, git branch, uh, with name the branch, create a branch, uh, git branch, uh, stop, uh, list all existing branches, check out, uh, switch from one branch to another, uh, git branch minus D, remove a selected branch, and so on. Okay? So, I said that uh, this local repository working copy will be on our computer. Here, can I have a, I can have a, a local repository for a project in Python. On another computer, I can have another repository. Then, for practice, it's better to have at least one central server, a remote repository. We will use uh, GitHub. There are few popular Git uh, servers. GitHub is one of them, for the most popular, I can say. Bitbucket is another one. SourceForge is another one, a little bit older. Start with SVN uh, and similar. Codeplex is by Microsoft or Google Code. They are similar and different in the philosophy of how it works. The alternative to have a central repository is to set up your own Git server. Here at Polytechnico, the, the group of uh, Dario, I, and the Professor Corno, uh, we have uh, our own instance of a Git server that is private to the group, for example. GitHub. GitHub is a commercial company. He wants to make money in that sense. It's slightly different from other code hosting sites because other code hosting sites put in the center the project. You create a project, and the project then has some users. In GitHub, you have the user that has some project. Because GitHub has the concept of social coding, you can uh, like a project, you can follow, watch a project, uh, you can uh, uh, fork a project, that, that's it. You can take a project of another person and copy all the repository from its repository to your own, and so on. So it's a commercial company. It charges for accounts for private repository. So if you register, sign up on GitHub, you have unlimited, an unlimited number of public repository. Up to your code or your data is public to the world, it's free. If you want to have a repository that you or some of you only can see, you have to pay. For students at this address, you can request a discount that for students consists in a free micro plan. That's it, unlimited public repository and five private repository for your use for two years. A micro plan costs 10 or 20 dollars by month. For the course, we have asked for 
they give to teaching for teaching purposes uh, some private repository. We asked for a private repository for each one. We are waiting for uh, approval for another course uh, that I, I took uh, this year or so last year. Uh, last year we obtained, also this year, we obtained 50 repository private uh, free. So they are quite uh, good from this point of view. 50 repository for uh, 50 repository private are around $100 by month. So they are quite uh, good, we can say, unlimited. So these free private repository we will assign you will remain forever private. Okay, so this is why we choose uh, GitHub, basically. Bitbucket is uh, worst of uh, presentation is similar to GitHub. Right now is a little bit less used. It's made in Python, just to know, uh, with Django. Bitbucket, in, sorry, GitHub is made in uh, Ruby on Rails. Bitbucket is made in uh, Python. Uh, in this case, uh, it's a commercial company, again, a little bit different way to uh, commercialize the repository. They give, they are not on the number of a project, but they give a repository on the number of collaborators. You can have infinite free, free private and uh, public repository for team up to five person. If you want a repository with six person, you have to pay. Um, Bitbucket, it's free for academia, also for students. So if you register to Bitbucket, you can have unlimited public and private repository forever, and also unlimited user for a single project. So it's an interesting competitor, we can say. This is the homework. I'll show you this page. Maybe. This is education.github.com. You can press click on the request a discount. After creating your own account, well, after creating your own account, and there are some guide from classroom usage and so on. And, no? And this is TriGit, just to show you. TriGit performs all the operation I briefly uh, speak today about in 15 minutes, a little bit uh, less than me, with a terminal where you can write only the right thing, otherwise it doesn't work. Or you can also press here, and it writes by itself. And the result are written here, and the instruction, and also visualized here in the graphical interface. So for example, I started here, git init to create a new repository, initialize the empty git repository in uh, here, in the root folder, and uh, here you see that there is a uh, folder named .git. Then if you type git status and press enter, you see that you are on branch master with nothing to commit, and so on. So you can continue this, uh, this tutorial up to infinity. Last thing, and then I add two things. First, this is a little bit of references, website, books, whatever about Git, and also the link to, again, to the Eclipse plugin for Git, in case uh, your Eclipse doesn't have. I would like to show you the Eclipse plugin. 
maybe. Questions up to here? OK, so you have a project on Eclipse. For example, the Python basics you have so on, your, on the website of the course. Then, this is not under version control. I have to share the project and put it in version control system. So uh, right-click, team, share project. All the Git-related operation, all the version control operation in Eclipse are under the team voice. Share project, how? Git, CVS, we select Git, next. Then configure a repository. You can create a new repository or use an existing repository. Maybe because you, you already have a repository outside Eclipse and Eclipse doesn't see it. So in this way, Eclipse has been aware of the existence of this repository. So for example, I try to create here a repository. Yes, and a post create a repository. And then finish. When I click finish, something happens. First of all, you see here Python Basics, that is the name of your local repository, and no head. No head means that you, you don't have um, a remote repository configured and a branch master or not configured. And the folder with all the exercise and all the exercise has a question mark near its icon and a major sign to see, to tell you that files are not under version control or modified. So we can team, commit, yeah. We can, for example, select all our file and enter a commit message. This is a standard, we can say, commit, initial commit message. Here you have the author and the committer that typically are the same. Here, all the project, all the files, you can select whatever you want. This operation perform an add and a commit. Eclipse gives us a shortcut. So if I click commit, it commits on the local branch. And so we see master. Here, that is master branch on my local repository. OK? All these are without the question mark. If I want to better, I can also open a Git view inside Eclipse where I see my local repositories. I have only one where I can configure some remotes. Here, I don't have. But if I click uh, Create Remote, uh, Remote Name, uh, as before, Origin. And then it wants the, the address, the internet address of the remote. Uh, OK. I, I, we don't have right now. But for example, it will be something like uh, change, something like HTTP. Um, I don't know, github.com slash uh, MEI 2014 uh, first. For example, something like that. And then you need the username and password if you use uh, HTTP or other type of authentication if you use other header. Finish will add the, the repository. If it, if it exists, right now not, because it doesn't exist. So I put cancel. And this add the remote. 
from now on I can push my committed file and eventually also pull down all the modification. Okay. Final things, remember to perform the homework. Well, create a personal GitHub account is really mandatory. At certain point, we will ask you for your username to compose the repository of the team for your project. Try Git tomorrow, maybe, 15 minutes, just to have present. Or you can also try with the terminal, uh, creating a public repository on GitHub and then delete it, whatever. And, and finally, remember to add ideas on the website, idea scale. Okay, I remember you that we required you to add at least one idea for person. Okay? You will not be evaluated upon your ideas right now. But we need, you must publish at least one idea. Maybe the simplest one, the stupidest one, or the hard one, or the most complex, or the most complete, or not. It's not important right now. An idea can be modified, can, be, can evolve, can be rendered more simple, or can be rendered more complex during the course. Right now, you have to make a, a challenges with yourself and invent at least one idea and publish on the DSKL website. Okay, we will see, not with me, on Thursday. Have a, a good night. <laughs>